Gamora Saki, I'm not going to lie, you really are something. What's up, YouTubers of the world? Mega Geek Mixer here to bring you guys this week's review on One Piece Manga Chapter 932. And man, wow, this was interesting, very interesting. First off, let's start off with the opening. Now, the opening is Kimura Saki. She's in her uh, mask and doing the little, doing the little play, the play. I, I forget what that was called. I really got to go back on my research on that. But pretty much all you, what I do know, it's almost like how they would open up the theme for those, those shows they did. Back when I was discussing the, the first chap, I mean, the chapter that ended Act 1. It was like the opening scene for Act 2. <laughs> she had the mask on. She had the Japanese knees guitar playing there. Very beautiful. That was beautiful. But then we go moving straight on back to when Nico Robin was caught by the Oniwaban group. A group of ninjas. And yeah, she tried to find a way to talk her way out. But no, not good. She, she got caught red-handed. And bam! They, they attack her and kill her. Or so they thought, because look what happens. Oh, she uses a little ninjutsu of her own, the her cloning style ninjutsu. Yeah, with, as y'all know, N Nico Robbins got that power where she can clone herself now. It's so great, in fact, that, yeah, she can pretty much be considered a ninja herself with her powers to be able to clone herself like that. <laughs> so, pretty much, she's got the Shadow Clone Jutsu. <laughs> Very nice. I can't wait to see her use more of that. I'll bet people will be, be like, admiring her about that. And as a matter of fact, this is making me can't wait to see, because I'm betting you that she will be wearing a nin ninja costume herself. It's pretty much just like Nami. And I'm not going to lie, I will have no objections to that whatsoever. Not a problem whatsoever. <laughs> but still, it, she was able to at least escape, because even though they found out it was a clone, they knew she couldn't be far away. But luckily, she went back to where the whole party was going on, with Orochi and Komurasaki there. And then she started to get into trying to get a little more info on the island and everything. But this is where we shift right back on into Kiroshiro, who seems to be getting the admiration of a lot of people at that party and stuff. Well, mostly because he's the one who brought Komorosaki over and everything. And he also explains how since he, he, he and his Yakuza's, they're like family and stuff, and if you mess with their family, you're going to be brought down hard, which they tried to do, which they did when they sent the, the headliners, one of the top headliners of Kaido's crew, after Sanji and his gang, when he was selling, when he was selling a little booth um, of Sobi, and, and they were out running a business, and he injured one of their families, sends out that guy with the, uh, what was his name again? Opage, I believe? page or something i can't remember off the top of my head and as y'all know sanji with his armor went into a fight with this guy <laughs> but as we know sanji's fine and everything but they probably think that he's dead <laughs> oh you guys are going to be surprised later on with that now but okay this but during this but also we also find out that Kini that Kiroshiro, he would really like to fight Kinemon some, someday. And this happens when Orochi's going into a little speech that people have a hard time believing, which I'll get in here, here to later. But basically, when he, Kinemon was pretty well known back in the day, but most people don't know him now, but, but Kiroshiro, he knows him, knows about his Firefox style, and would really like to face him one day. So, do we already got a setup for a battle? For one of the battles coming in the future, Kinemon versus, versus Kirishiro, because I'm not going to lie, I would really like to see what this Kirishiro guy's, what his fighting style is. We already know Kinemon with the Fire Fox style, cutting through flames and everything like that. I like that. Very cool. Very cool indeed. <laughs> so I would definitely like to see this battle between two samurais. <laughs> this will be cool. So it's good to know we may have a setup for one of a confirmation for one of the battles going forward. <laughs> but now we're going to go into the big two main event points to this chapter. And that was the first off with Orochi. We learned actually more about Orochi's character and Kamurasaki's character. You see, it turns out Orochi, during, it seems that during all his 
little celebratory events. He likes to go on about the story about how he took control of Wano country and everything. And, well, the way he presents it, it makes people be like, here he goes with that crazy story and everything. And <laughs> and I can't necessarily say I blame him. And even Nico Robbins having a is understanding why they find it hard to believe this guy because the way he's talking about her, glorifying over it, and talking about a revenge coming and a rebellion starting, and Kinemon and his red sheafs, his nine red sheafs, people really, since this happened a long time ago, lots changed since then, they have a hard time believing that there's even a rebellion out there. But considering how that rebellion's happening in the shadows, it's all believable on why they can't believe it. And considering how Orochi's always talking about it, like like some very folklore, t folklore tale or everything that might be happening, or some ghostly tale, you can understand why people have a hard time believing him. Because even I'm like, dude, it sounds like you shouldn't be talking about this all the time. You should only talk about this when you should really have to, if you want people to believe you and stuff. But this is where it all goes into, into the final ending. So it turns out it's it's become such a bit ridiculous thing that people w will try to laugh at it. And if there's one thing we've come to learn now about Rochi's character, it's his character in the sense of people laughing at him is like Pika's character. Yeah, from Dumb Flamingo's crew, one of the top executive officers from Dumb Flamingo's crew who ate the Stone Stone fruit, he... He has a very high-pitched voice, he, and and people laugh at it because it just don't fit, and I don't blame him. Even I'm like, okay, that voice just don't fit a guy like that. An high-pitched voice, that's just crazy. <laughs> but that's all, he gets very sensitive about his voice, so he'll attack anybody who laughs at him. Well, that's the same with Orochi here that leads into the final chapter. You see, Otoko was laughing out loud about that while everyone else was trying to hold it in. But those were all adults. Toko, Otoko is just a kid. But even still, Orochi don't care if you're a kid. You laugh at him, he's going to try to kill you. And that's exactly what he tried to do. Luckily, Robin was able to get her out of get him out of safety zone but this is where we get a stand from Komorosaki where we see some very unbelievable bravery even to a man as violent as Orochi because when he tries to harm Otoko she just slaps him slaps him and knocks him to the ground showing that she don't care who you are she is the daughter of a warrior she is not backing down she don't care who you guys are and considering how she's done with all these men it don't surprise me that much well, maybe it does a little, but still, considering how she is with men that's similar to Hancock, nah, not really that big of a surprise, but somewhat so. So, but either case, when she showed off how brave she was, and the very mention of her saying she's a br daughter of a warrior makes me think, is she the daughter of maybe one of these nine red sheath warriors out there? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see going down the road. But this all led to Orochi finally showing off his double fruit again. And it was, and while we already saw a solid, a solid, a silhouette, yeah, silhouette, that was the word I was looking for. Sorry, guys. A silhouette and drawing of it, we get the full version of it. And yeah, pretty much what you expect in Orochi or an Orochi form, I guess a mythical zone devil fruit, with, with what this arc is going for, with how Kaido has devil fruit users that are zone types, animal types, such as ancient, myths, and regular zone users, carnivores maybe too, it didn't surprise me with that. For most of these devil fruit users we're going to be seeing, and we're going to, they're no doubt all going to be fighting, it's going to be just that, a bunch of zone users from myth, zone, I mean, myth zones, ancient zones, and regular zones out there. So, you can be, you're not going to be surprised much with that. But, it still leads into something else that we might see later on. Because after this chapter, I'm like, what's about to happen? Because Kiroshiro was like, looks like there's going to be a bloodbath. Well, since Kamurasaki is part of his little y Yakuza group, I guess he's going to attack. Well, all I got to say is, we'll see. Let's just see what happens, because 
that was something. <laughs> yes, this chapter was a very interesting set setup for things to come. While giving us more development on these characters, seeing more sides to themselves. <laughs> and yeah, with how I saw the appearance of this Orochi guy and his attitude and everything, I'm not really surprised with what we're seeing and everything from this guy. But it's really going to be interesting to know more on him, more on him, more of the past and more of everything else to come. We actually need to get more on what's going to happen with Momonosuke. Last we saw, he was with Chopper and the others finding Big Mom. Well, I wonder what this may all lead into. Let's find out. And will there be more with Otoko and meeting up with, like, maybe Momonosuke and Otama? Otama, who was earlier on in this arc with Luffy? I would definitely love to know. What did you guys think of this chapter? Leave them in the comment section down below and click the bell icon to be notified when I make more videos. And if you're loving my videos, subscribe to the channel. And like I said, click the bell icon to be notified of more videos. <laughs> I did that backwards there, guys. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> but in either case, Maggie Mixer signing out. Bye.